What's going on, Star Wars fans? My name is John Solo, and I am excited because today we are talking about one of my favorite characters in the entire Star Wars universe, Han Solo. Han Solo, father, husband, smuggler, scoundrel, warrior, and friend. You know, Han often receives recognition from the Star Wars audience for one of these titles, and that makes sense. Right from the start, in the very first scene we see him in, his character just exudes these traits. And while that is all well and good, I feel like there is something else about Han that should also be brought to everyone's attention. He may appear to be a stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder at first, but I think the guy's a genius. Now, in my opinion, there is really no denying that Han has a decent level of intelligence. He was able to make it big as a professional smuggler, which no one can deny requires a certain amount of brains. He has escaped almost certain death on multiple occasions. Yes, I bet you have. And he's managed to fix up the Millennium Falcon more times than anyone can count. But in the eyes of some fans, this isn't due to Han being intelligent, but instead just him being lucky or street smart. And while I don't disagree that Han has gotten incredibly lucky in some cases, I want to take a look at some situations where he's proven to be more than just that. And appropriately, it starts with the movie he's introduced to us in, A New Hope. While being shot at by the Empire, Han is trying to get the Falcon to jump to light speed, and Luke is giving him a hard time about it. As a response, Han has this to say. Traveling through hyperspace like dust and crops, boy. Without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star, or bounce too close to a supernova, and then an injured trip real quick, wouldn't you? I want to focus on the bit where he mentions precise calculations. The Millennium Falcon needs these calculations to enter hyperspace space safely. Something rather interesting that some of you may have noticed is that Han is programming the hyperspace route himself, which means he's the one doing the calculations. It should also be mentioned that he's doing this while simultaneously under attack from an Imperial Star Destroyer, so he's displaying both next level math and piloting skills. But John, just because we see Han on the computer doesn't automatically mean he's doing the calculations on the spot. Right, that's a really good point, and admittedly it entered my head as well. But then I remembered that Han doesn't own an astromech droid. So unless by chance he had the exact calculations for the route from Tatooine to Alderaan perfectly memorized, he had to have gotten them from somewhere, and I don't think it would have been the computer that's on board the ship as he only seems to use it as a last resort. I say this because of how we see him behave in The Empire Strikes Back when the Falcon is having mechanical issues. While on Hoth, it's pretty much just him and Chewie working to fix up the ship. There is one droid that we see in the scene, but Han looks pretty annoyed with it because it isn't doing a very good job. In addition to that, later on in the movie when the Empire is pursuing him through an asteroid field and the Falcon starts having issues again, he doesn't plug C-3PO into the ship until they've landed inside an asteroid. Of course, you could always make the argument that the reason he waited was because the Empire was chasing him down and he couldn't exactly leave his seat during the middle of that. Yet even so, despite this being the umpteenth time the ship has malfunctioned in some way, it's only the first time that he uses 3PO to figure out what's wrong. We know this because the protocol droid makes a comment about the ship having the most peculiar dialect after he speaks with it. Sir. I don't know where your ship learned to communicate, but it has the most peculiar dialect. Now, admittedly, when I first heard this line, I thought it might be a joke about the ship's use of explicit language, because after all, its owner is Han Solo, and before that, it was owned by Lando Calrissian. However, the author of this theory pointed out another interesting possibility. Think about this. C-3PO knows over six million forms of communication. As a result, he probably knows over six million curse words. Nice to see a familiar face. It should that. How rude! So why would he think that the ship's swearing was peculiar at all? Maybe what he actually meant was, Han, your computer is dumb as shit and he was just being polite. I'm sorry, I don't like to swear in these videos. What I meant to say was dumb as bantha fodder. The point is, Han's attachment to the Falcon is based on something deeper, and the computer being dumb and outdated touches on that. If Han is indeed a math genius, then the Falcon is a ship that he can fly freely, using his full ability without being slowed down by a droid or a computer that's slower than he is. One of the reasons he's so proud of the Falcon is because he takes pride in the things that he's been able to accomplish with it. And let's take a look at what he's accomplished with it. There is, of course, the point about 
about him jumping to hyperspace without the assistance of a droid or computer, which I only bring up again to point out that we don't see many, if any, other characters do this at all throughout the saga. There is also the pretty incredible feat of passing through Starkiller Base's shield by flying through it at light speed and then pulling out of it at just the right moment so the ship doesn't crash directly into the planet's surface. I mean, he does crash, but he doesn't crash directly into the planet's surface. Don't you think this would require pretty precise calculations to pull off? And if the ship is infamous for being a hunk of junk in the original trilogy, just imagine the shape it must be in in The Force Awakens after being mishandled and abused for decades. If Han is able to do all of these impressive calculations in his head without the help of a droid or a Nava computer, it also explains his skill and accomplishments as a pilot. He's able to do it all himself, automatically and on instinct. When he brags about accomplishing the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, he always gives the Falcon the credit. But if you look at what the Kessel Run actually is, you can see that it isn't really a matter of what your ship is capable of, but instead what you, the pilot, are capable of. The biggest role that the Millennium Falcon plays in Han's accomplishments is that it doesn't hold him back. And his math skills aren't even limited to space flight. We know that he won the Millennium Falcon in the best game of Sabacc he's ever played. Sabacc is a card game heavily based on calculating odds. We learn in the canon novel Bloodline that Han is a master at the game, and he even taught his wife at the time, Leia, strategies to win almost every hand she played. As I said before, I do not deny at all that Han has gotten incredibly lucky on some occasions. I also understand that when you look at all of his accomplishments so critically, it's pretty much canon that the guy is intelligent. I just think it's interesting to be able to attribute that intelligence to something more than street smarts, like math. Not many people have discussed this idea before, but it really makes sense to me. The reason Han said to never tell him the odds is because he already knows them. And that, my friends, is the entire theory, and I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with it? Do you not? Leave your thoughts in a comment down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Share it with any of your fellow Star Wars nerds who you think would appreciate it, and subscribe for weekly Star Wars content. As always, I've got the links to my sources and social media accounts in the description down below. Go give those a like or follow if you're feeling it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be seeing you all very soon. In case you forgot, my name is John Solo, and may the Force be with you.